just sitting here doing a little Friday night reading. <laughs> I right, stumbled on stumbled on this article, right? So the banking system, right? Banking, banking uh, you know, the Steve Mnuchin, the Secretary of the Treasury, did a great service to America the other day by exposing to the American people the big six, right? The big six banks that are responsible for for our banking and our mortgages and, and all of our money needs in the country. And who are the six? It's Wells Fargo, it's uh, 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 Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, right? The big six that have all the money, right? All the fucking money. How do I look today? <laughs> so you guys didn't like that Bernie fucking shit, right? You know, you're fucking talking about Bernie Sanders, fucking commie, fucking socialist. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, fucking guys fucking hate fucking Bernie Sanders, man. He's fucking slimy shit. So anyway, so let's keep our eye on the swamp. I, I fundamentally disagree. I'm I'm making a full, a full pledge to steer away from the stupidity of the deep state. Oh, the fucking deep state is uh, running around trying to catch these idiots, right? When the real, uh, the real swamp is and always has been the banking industry. So let's let's see what's going on of late. <clears throat> All right, so. Uh, this, this is, I'm reading from the New York Post as usual. And, uh, let's see, Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is paying $575 million to settle claims by U.S. states that it saddled millions of customers with bogus accounts and slapped them with unfair charges in the bank's auto and mortgage lending business. It's fucking fraud, right? So, so let's see what they did. The beleaguered bank, which has been hit with a slew of scandals over the last two years, announced Friday that it reached agreements with all 50 states and the District of Columbia. This agreement underscores our serious commitment to making things right in regard to past issues as we work to build a better bank, said Wells Fargo Chief Executive Tim Sloan. He's covering his own ass, right? Let's find out what they actually did. Two years ago, it emerged that Wells Fargo employees opened as many as 3.5 million accounts on behalf of clients, uh, behalf of clients, without their consent, in order to meet aggressive sales targets. Some of those clients incurred fees for the fake accounts. Right? They're opening fake accounts in the banking industry, right? There's got to be there's got to be three and a half million felonies just committed, right? It's fraud. They're committing fraud out in the open. So what's the consequence? Later, it was found that the bank unsuccessfully pushed its auto loan auto loan clients into expensive auto insurance and charged its mortgage clients improper fees to lock in interest rates. That's more. That's more wood on the fire. But wait, there's more. In addition to the fines, Wells Fargo said it will maintain a team and website dedicated to assisting potential affected customers. The bank already put away $400 million of the settlement in the third quarter and said it expected to set aside another $1.175 million in the fourth quarter. Today's announcements announced settlement is another step in the right direction for Wells Fargo as the company continues to resolve its past missteps in our view, said Brian Klein Hansel, analyst at KBW. They just, they just co-signed each other's total unequivocal bullshit. So even so, the bank still faces regulatory scrutiny from the Federal Reserve that has capped its growth until it gets, quote, widespread consumer abuses and other compliance breakdowns under control. Right? So that's the Fed scolding their big fat finger at Wells Fargo for, for defrauding three and a half million customers in the, in the United States. Right? So there's a couple of things going on, right? So they pay $575 million. Uh, the half a billion dollars. It's it's like it's no skin off of their ass, really, right? But the other thing is, who do they pay it to? 
right? That's that. I don't. I don't know. I didn't. I, actually, I don't. I don't research. I didn't research that part of it. But where exactly does that money go? How long do they have to pay? Right. So, but and there's no. There's never criminal charges. That that's the point. The the CEO just gets. He gets to go in front of the the audience and say everything is fantastic. We're working to make a bet, make our bank better, right? When you just defrauded three and a half million people. People are powerless, right? And these are again, these are the people that we trust our our savings with. This is who we do our who who handles our money, right? And the Federal Reserve is all over this, right? They have their their hand uh, in the cookie jar, right? So anyway, just another you know, just another example of uh, bank fraud done right out in the open, no consequence. When you find a a, a bank with that has close to a trillion dollars in assets, right? When you find them, uh, find them a mere half a billion, five hundred million dollars. It's not, it's not a big deal, right? It's the cost of doing business, and it, and it, as I said, exactly how does that money actually it, that find money? How does that money actually funnel back to uh, to to the real economy? Does it? Does it ever leave the bank? I don't know. Marcus Conti reporting.